everyone, welcome to Miss Sarah's Math Corner. Uh, today we're going to be talking about decimals. This is uh, video one of two uh, with a very brief introduction about decimals. This one we're talking about decimals in general and how to compare them. In the next video you'll see how to add and subtract decimals. So basically decimals are directly related with fractions. Uh, on the left side of the of the decimal you'll have your whole numbers and on the right side you'll have the parts or the fractions and or the bit that's left over basically so if we were talking fractions uh, or money let's say you'd have um, your dollars over here and your cents over here now let's just go through the place value of the decimals here so of course, I know without looking at the decimals, I know um, the regular place value of the whole number. So I can start over here. This is my hundreds place. My tens and ones or units, depending how your teacher describes it. And then over here on the other side of uh, the decimal, we have our parts. So we have the tenths place. tenths. It's really important. Then we have the hundredths. And then we have the thousandths. Of course, just like going this way, the number can go on forever and ever and ever. Just like going this way, it can go on forever and ever as well. But for our purposes in elementary school, we really only talk about tenths, hundredths, and thousands. So that's what we're going to use uh, today in our comparison. Now again, this is just a very brief overview. Uh, for more details about how decimals work and more examples of them, I would focus a lot on fractions. There's some great videos of fractions out there as well, so you can uh, look up that for yourselves. And so we're going to talk about comparing decimals today. So when you compare something, you're trying to figure out which one is bigger. Are they is something bigger than, less than, or equal to? So our first example here is 8 and 437 thousandths compared to 8 and 436 thousandths. Now notice how I say the decimals out loud. It's really important. I'm not going to say 8436 or 8.436. Uh, the way you say it is with the and. So your and is your decimal basically. It's showing you, it's, it's telling you the separation of the parts and the wholes. And it's very important when you say whole numbers like that, that you don't use the and. So for example, the number 1,372. I'm not going to say 1,372 because that implies that there is a decimal there. So just be careful when you're practicing how to say your numbers. So here again, we had 8 and 437 thousandths. And I'm saying thousandths because that's where my last number is in the thousandths place and 8 and 436 thousandths. So I'm just trying to see which one is bigger. And it's the same thing when you were in the younger grades in kindergarten and grade one and, and you had to compare which number is bigger. Is it this number or is it this number? Well, okay, if I look at the first number here, I have a one and a one. Well, that's the same, so that's not helping me. So then I have to go to the next one. I have a zero and then I have a two. Okay, well, 2 is bigger than 0, so I know that the 12 is going to be the bigger number. Well, just like in decimals, it's going to work exactly the same way. Okay, so you come back over here. And you say, okay, I have an 8 on this side and an 8 on this side. Okay, that doesn't help me. A 4 in the tenths place, a 4 in the tenths place. Mm-hmm, doesn't help me either. I'm going to keep going. A 3 in the hundredths place, 3 in the hundredths place over here. Okay, that doesn't help either, but I keep going. Seven in the thousands place and six in the thousand, sorry, thousands place over here. Okay, well, that just helped me out. So the seven is the bigger number. So I know that my comparing sign, oh, I'm being attacked by the black marker over here, sorry about that, is going to be the bigger number. So 
the comparing symbol is going to go over there. And remember, ways to help you remember this, you can have um, Pac-Man that goes and like see the bigger number, or uh, an alligator always like see the bigger one, or a crocodile, or a monster, or whatever way you learned it. The thing likes to eat the bigger number. So there is your um, greater than symbol on that side. Okay, we're going to go to the next example here. So now we have 43 and 8 tenths. And again, 8 is in the tenths place, and there's no numbers afterwards. So I'm using it um, as what how I'm going to say it. And then I have 43 and 80 hundredths. I'm going to say it like that because the zero is in the hundredths place. And I always say uh, what the number is in the last spot. Okay, so for this, I'm noticing that I have the same number in the whole number, a section that is to the left of the decimal, I have 43 and 43, then I have just an 8, and an 8 and a 0. Well, there's a couple of ways around this to make your life easier. We can add a 0 to a decimal, or to the numbers after a decimal, so to the right, and it will not change the value of a decimal at all. In fact, it actually helps us because it's helping us to compare without changing the value. So no matter what numbers are here, I can always add a couple of zeros at the end to make it so that it has the same digits or the same number of digits so that it's, easily, it's easier to compare. So if I put a zero here, I'm not changing the number at all. I'm not changing the value of it. I'm just making my life easier by showing that I can compare the two. If this one has two numbers after the decimal, I also want this to have two numbers after the decimal. And then when I look at it, it's a lot easier to compare. And if you've noticed, I've just made the number the exact same thing. So they're actually equal. And I can say this in different ways. I could say this is 43 and 8 tenths or 43 and 80 hundredths. It's actually the exact same number. I could add as many zeros as I want and it will not change the value of it. So again, I will only add the zeros um, again because um, I want to see how many numbers are at the end. So for this, in this case, I added one because this had two uh, tenths and hundredths place, and this only had a tenths place. So I just put the extra one to help me out. You'll see that come up again when you're adding and subtracting decimals as well. And for our last example here, we have 39 and 9 thousandths. And again, that 9 is in the thousandths place, so that's how I'm going to say it, compared to 39 and 9 hundredths. Well, right away, I can tell that since my nine is in the hundredths place and over here, and the nine is in the thousandths place here, well, that means, of course, that that is going to be uh, more. But again, using the trick as before, I see, well, I have three numbers after the decimal here and only two. Well, again, to make my life easier to compare, I'm just going to add the zero so I can compare a lot easier. So I have 3 and 9, 3, 9, that's the same. I have a 0, a 0, a 0, and then a 9. Oh, okay, so that one is bigger, so I know this number is bigger. Or I can say, well, I have just 9 there, so I have 9,000, so I only have 9 out of 1,000 over here. And here I have 90 out of 1,000. That's how it would show that. So 90 thousandths, 9 thousandths. So I can see that this one is bigger. So there's a lot more to say on decimals and fractions. So again, it really helps that you have a good basis of, uh, of knowledge of fractions, especially um, fractions out of 10 hundredths and thousands. But again, this is your whole number and these are your fractions here. So anything that is over 10 is your tenths. Anything that is over a hundred is your hundredths, and everything that is over a thousand is your thousandths. Any fraction that um, doesn't have one of these as the denominator, it you can convert it to a decimal, but that is a lesson for another day. 
So that is how a basic introduction of decimals and how to compare them.